<laughs> your dog is just all about needing your attention. <laughs> You're just gonna have to do that one over. <laughs> yeah, all of it. So this is the last of our five whiskey series. Um, so it started at Reddit. A lot of other bourbon tube channels have have done this. Have done their own whiskey version. tube. Whiskey tube, bourbon tube. Bourbon tube seems appropriate. I mean, for bourbon, except unless you're Brian, who drinks a lot of non bourbons. Um, We're all inclusive. I, I, I just drink all inclusive. Yeah. One of mine tonight is is not a bourbon. Um, so anyway, it's, it's, like, it's like, hey, you're drinking bourbon, you're drinking whiskey, you're drinking good stuff. Answer. Why be picky? Just drink. This is, this is uh, Glenn, I don't know what you're doing here. This is my whiskey dog. Um, she's posing. Okay, she's done. So this is the last of the, the, the series here. So we, we did a choose your, if you could only have five whiskeys, which who in their right mind would ever only have five whiskeys? I was reminded that some people are on a budget. Some people are on allowance from their mother, like Brian. Um, you only get five whiskeys. Um, so if we only had five whiskeys, these are our five. So the categories were everyday drinker, uh, mixer. Again, I don't know who actually mixes things. Um, Friday night pour, impress your guests, and then a special occasion. So here we go. I'm going to start with my... Everyday drinker here, and Ooh, I might get a little forcer. a little push a little pushback on the price, but I'm gonna go Old Forester 1920 <laughs> as my everyday drinker. So we ah. did a blind off a few videos ago. Go check it out where Fred Minnick had done a everyday drinker blind off. We did our version of that 1921 out. So TJ, you chose for your everyday drinker uh, rare breed from Wild Turkey, yep. which came in number two in our blind off. I'm choosing 1920, which came in as number one unanimous on our blind off. So what, by the way, I, I feel like for some people it might be a little bit high on the price point, like you said, for an everyday, but not to an unrealistic level. Sixty dollars, not unreasonable for me, especially when you consider like, hey, you had a lot of. I have more than five bottles, so it's like if I'm going to drink something every day, I'm going to enjoy it. So I'm going to drink good whiskey. And I do enjoy this one, Brian, which pains me to admit it. But look, I mean, yeah. hey, I'm not saying 1920 is bad. I just prefer 1910. Yeah, and and I, you know, it's coming in 115 proof, but I I think it drinks lower. I tend to prefer the higher proofs anyway. So if you if you want to walk, you know, um, proof it down, you can. Um, but this has got it all: nose, palate, finish. This was our number one again from the blind. So. Yep. This would be my choice for an everyday drinker. And here we are on a Wednesday and I'm going to, I'm going to choose to drink it. Yeah. You can never go wrong buying a bottle of 1920. All right. So my whiskey number two for the mixer, um, I'm going to choose Driftless Glen Rye 51. So what I look for in a mixer is something that's a little spicier, a little bit firmer on the palate um, flavor that's going to come through in that regardless of what you throw at it, as far as the mixer, um, certainly you know, the definition of a mixed drink is that it's going to subdue a little bit of the bourbon flavors. It's going to add, you know, you're adding things, whether it's an old fashioned, you're going to add a little bit of sweet from a, say a maple syrup or a simple syrup and a little bit of bitters, but I still want, I still want to taste the bourbon. I still want that to come through. And that's what I like about the Rye 51. Um, honestly, I, I enjoy the Rye 51 neat. Um, it's coming out of Driftless Glen Distillery. If you're unfamiliar, it's relatively new. They've been in business about six years. Their products are hitting a nice stride. Um, out of central Wisconsin. Um, but I, I enjoy this Rye 51 again, neat or, but especially in a, in an old fashion. So my third bourbon is our Friday night pour. Again, I got a little bit of flack for the price on my everyday drinker. I'm probably getting a little flack on my Friday night pour. Yeah. Um, so, I'm just going to, so, so before you even start here, do you drink this every Friday night? Would you be I willing mean, to drink this every Friday night? I would say Chuck probably would, but Chuck's in a different tax bracket than the two of us. But that's why we have Chuck in the channel because he reaches other groups. 
So I could have been more ridiculous with this choice. Right. So let's yeah. let's frame it that way. No, I, I think this is this is a reasonable Friday pour for um, for many people out there. I think not for everybody. Um, this might make the special occasion or impress your friends list for others. Um, but for me, I'm um, it it tends to be a Friday pour. Um, and I'll, I'll explain one of the reasons. So I'm just going to say this. Um, this is this is a brand for me. Um, this is barrel bourbon. So for me, ah. I can agree. I, I'm I'm on. I'm I'm on. You're good. Yeah. So for me, it's barrel bourbon. So like, you know, barrel barrel bourbon batch 21, which won some awards at San Francisco, is phenomenal. Um, has blinded off really well with some of our other stuff, but I mean, batch 26. Um, the Barrel Armida, which is a finished in pear, brandy, rum cast is fantastic. Batch 27, which just came out, which I had a little bit of a pour earlier. Their Barrel New Year products are wonderful. They bring those out every year. That's a bourbon product. Uh, batch 24, which actually was honorable mention in my top 20 whiskeys. Go check out our video. They do some single barrel private releases, or actually that's not single barrel, but they do some private releases, which are private batches, you know, batch 25, which got this wonderful, uh, a lot of accolades up. from the, <laughs> can we still a lot see of accolades. Chuck in there? I know, where is he? <laughs> I, can't, I can't see him behind all the barrels. No, I don't drink all of those every Friday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <but laughs> I would like to see you have a have a solid pour from each of those on a Friday night and see how you are on Saturday. And I would look like TJ last week on our call. Um, Fair enough. But, <laughs> Which so barrel really bourbon, you, can't, you, you cannot go wrong on a Friday pour with barrel bourbon. Um, and the great thing is fantastic. they're all they're all completely different. So like yeah. you go batch 25 to batch 27, you're just getting completely different stuff. But this thing that stays constant is their high quality. Yeah. yeah. I mean, quick plug for our future review of batch 27, which just came out, man, I was drinking that earlier tonight. It is like a, it's just cinnamon and spice. And it is, it's like Christmas in a glass. Who needs, well, I think we all need more Christmas right now. Yeah. Can we get a quick take on 27 just came out, correct? That's right. Yep. How how would you compare that to some of the most recent ones that have come out? Quick. So bat, batch twenty four made my honorable mention top twenty. Batch twenty five got a lot of accolades from other reviewers. Um, twenty seven, I'd say I'd put them behind that, but still okay. really good. Like it still makes my Friday night pour. Okay. Still makes Quick my Friday night pour. Good enough. All right. So now we're down to impress your guests which, you know, when like TJ and Brian come and visit me, it's, it's difficult to impress them. Um, just they have these expectations that are unreasonable. Um, High expectations, sir. I mean, I've got 120 bottles in my collection. So. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, that, you, guys are, you guys are connoisseurs. So I'll take it that way. Experts in the area. Um, so I'm going to go with my top 20, mm. my whiskey of top, or my, my top whiskey of 2020. There we go. Um, and this is the old Carter single barrel 13 year. So this is barrel 78, 73, sorry, from last year, uh, coming in at 119 proof. Um, but I really would it's say this is a your... brand. Oh yeah. You see my, my tasting, <laughs> yeah, yeah, my, taste. my blind tasting note. It was number nine that night, whatever. <laughs> um, but I really say old Carter in general. So I have a, the batch six from last year, which is fantastic. They're um, just picked up their whiskey uh, from batch one from last year, um, which was amazing. So really as my impressed your guess is old Carter. So it's an uh, relatively, at least outside of the bourbon community, not a well-known brand, not, not a Buffalo trace, not a Pappy, not a, that's a Buffalo trace, but um, not a four roses, not an old Forester. I mean, it's a, not a well-known brand, and so I think this, this hits that, um, what I like to do, at least with, with, when you impress your guests is bring them something they haven't had before or, uh, unexpected And that, I think is old Carter. So to me, this drinks better than, than most of those other whiskeys, you know, price point is, is up there 200, 220, depending this single barrels, 220, um, availability, you know, it comes out a few times a year. So depending on where you are, you should be able to find it, um, willing to pay that price but 
just phenomenal whiskey if you're get drinking the old Carter brand. Yeah, and I mean, I'm with you. I'm a fan of old Carter. Um, and my question is like, what would you be willing to do for an old Carter? Because you know, I, I would be willing freezing to cold dive into some ice cold water fresh out of an ice storm for some of that old Carter. Uh, which I have yet to get, by the way. I don't know. Should we link that video to Um but yeah. yeah, I think the video I, I've already posted. I, I so. love that you had this as a special because I would be willing to do a lot of things for an old Carter. You know, your your bottle of old Carter that you jumped in the ice cold pool for is still in my basement. So depending on what you do or say to me from here on <laughs> until I see you next, um, may or may not diminish in quantity. Yeah. How, how quickly can we arrange a healthy social distance uh, exchange? I mean, that's, that's maybe this Friday point. night. <laughs> we'll make it a Friday night pour. Yep. Uh, no, 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 no. My Friday night pour. Yep. I would say it'll ship you a sample. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. All right. So, my last is special occasion. Um, certainly, so TJ already had the uh, Old Fitz 15, and I have an Old Fitz 16, so I didn't want to double up there. Um, but that is definitely one that sits on my shelf for special occasions. Um, but in addition to that, if you watched our New Year 20 or our Best of 2020 as well, um, this one is only going to come out um, on special occasions. That's the George T. Stag. So I was lucky enough to get my hands on this out of the BTAC collection last year. Um, just wonderful. So the the bold cherry notes that you expect from from Buffalo Trace and the spice that comes along with the finish. And um, This one's going to go on the back of the shelf and only get opened occasionally. So. You started to work your way through that bottle pretty well, though. Yeah, and I haven't even sent it to you guys for a rating yet either. <laughs> I know. Make sure you say something. And, and yeah. don't go skimpy on the pour. <laughs> yeah, so I'll give you one of the four ounce bottles. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and I'll fill it a quarter of the way full, sir. <laughs> All right. So, recapping 1920 is my everyday drinker. Rye 51 from Driftless Glen is my. Uh, mixer, my what was my Friday drinker was barrel. Barrel. You choose. Yep. All the <laughs> barrels. You had yeah, like thirty all pounds. Of barrels. Just all, all of the, the barrels. barrels in there. Old Carter is my uh, impression guest. guest and special occasion George T. Stag. So there it is. 